I won't talk too long. I want Rick to get to the World Series. <laughs> um, again, my name is uh, Josh Saxon. I'm the Executive Director of the Salmon River Restoration Council, and we also have a board member here, Jennifer. And um, we are located, our office is located in Sawyer's Bar. Uh, how many people have been on the Salmon River, first of all? Beautiful. Most of everybody knows where it is. Okay, good. Um, uh, I think in, since 1992, we just celebrated our 20-year anniversary a couple of years ago. And um, I have uh, what we put together, a 92 to 2012 20-year accomplishments report. And this is a great, I have extra ones if you would like to grab one because it's a fantastic way to get familiar with our organization and what we've been doing for the last 20-plus 20, 20 years on the river there. Um, so Sawyer's Bar, Forks of Salmon, and Cecilville, and then Soames Bar at the mouth of the Salmon River is kind of the communities that we serve. And so roughly about 200 people are in our watershed. So, and we are the main employer in the watershed by far. So we, we run a uh, fuels reduction crew every year, typically through um, Grants Clearinghouse Grants, Fish and Wildlife Service Grants. Um, we're starting to uh, partner with, uh, with the Forest Service a little bit more. That's been a challenge, uh, to say the least. But um, I think in terms of watershed restoration are the two main things that we do very, very well are um, fields reduction and fisheries restoration. Um, we have the, the largest uh, wild remnant population of spring salmon in California, and um, that comes um, into our watershed in the summertime, and they hang out in pools. And then um, just a few weeks ago, uh, they got the ability to, um, with, the, with the nice rain, distribute in our system and start spawning. So we're doing spawning surveys right now for our spring fish, and our fall fish uh, are starting to, to get in the system and spawn right now too. So we're doing, we're doing combined spring and fall uh, spawning surveys on the Salmon River. It's, um, it's, it's uh, some people call it a pretty pristine river. It's, um, it's not, uh, doesn't have any ag interests. There's um, there's not a lot of uh, uh, diversions. There's, um, it's pretty cool, clean water, but there's also some problems. Um, there's a lot of uh, remnant mining and logging activity, uh, negative impacts um, for years and years that have, uh, sediment has filled up a lot of our deep pools, and so we're dealing with sediment issues and temperature issues. Um, we, uh, we've obviously, uh, along with everybody else, have suffered the last three years with drought. And so, you know, one of the things that we've been doing with our fish population is really working on our cold water inputs. So a lot of the tributaries into the Salmon River, we've done a lot of work on, the, on those, um, uh, the mouth areas of those tributaries. So we'll move rocks around, we'll create pools, um, we'll um, make some uh, refugial areas with, uh, with some willow and alder and stuff so that our juveniles can hang out there. And then our adult spring fish, when they come up, they have, they have a place to hang out as well. And in some instances can even get up those tributaries a little bit more and get into that cold water and survive when temperatures get up in the, in the uh, I think in some instances uh, on the Salmon River, we had uh, temperatures approaching 80 degrees Fahrenheit in our river this year. So it's really difficult for fish to sustain life in that kind of environment. So. Um, and uh, the other thing that we do um, that's probably a uh, great success story is we um, obviously in the Salmon River, we deal with fire quite a bit. So um, we have a community liaison program that we developed a few years ago that's kind of a model that's, that's been um, uh, utilized by the Forest Service with other communities when they have an incident command team come in. And what it really does is it connects the incident command team with the community in a way that the community feels like they're not just being railroaded when it comes to wildfire suppression. So there's a lot of, uh, in each of our communities, there are uh, community liaisons. And those people have um, the ability to, they, they do all their, they do basic 32, they're all, they're, they're ready to be, um, you know, interacting with fire personnel when they get there. So um, they're able to basically provide a link between um, wildfire suppression, um, law enforcement, uh, so, for example, evacuation orders, evacuation advisories, those, those can go through those community liaisons to our community members because we're a very remote community. People are spread out. They're up mountain roads and out in the middle of nowhere. And so our community liaisons are basically responsible for figuring out at all times we have like 
we have like a community sign in and out sheet so we know who's in their house and who's not in their house. So when the evacuation order comes in, we have the ability to say, oh, look at the sheet and say, okay, yeah, they're still home and no, they're gone. And, and we're able to get that information to the Forest Service or to law enforcement so they know what's going on. So uh, I'm not gonna take up too much more of your time. If you do um, wanna learn more about our organization and what we do, please thumb through this. Is there any questions? How many volunteers do you have besides your Um We typically have a, gosh, I, I want to say it's a... Like 200. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, our, our, um, typically what happens when, in our volunteer, basically we have a, a really robust noxious weeds program. And so a lot of our volunteers it comes from noxious weed um, work days and um, uh, like a roadside adoption program where they, they'll just once a week go up the road and pull all the mustard on one section of the road and so that's it's, it's basically the community taking ownership over their watershed and saying no we don't want these weeds taken over and so they'll go out and we'll, we'll go across the river on a raft and and go into a spot that has spurs and we'll clean it all out and so we, that's where a lot of our volunteerism comes um, fisheries work too some people will just come out and volunteer and do spawning surveys and, uh, and do things like that. It's like, we don't get very many volunteers with a chainsaw doing field reduction. You know, one of the things that I, you know, I've been out with PD and looking at your invasive species program and it's phenomenal. I mean, it's really, you know, not well known that the effort everybody's put in over there to deal with invasive species and, you know, I, I Cut logs in the Salmon River. I know how isolated it is, and there's not a lot to do in Salmon River, so maybe pulling weeds looks pretty good <laughs> sometimes. But, but you know, that I mean, that's what there is, and the community gets involved in doing that. I mean, they, you know, the county has, you know, ideas about, you know, to what degree it may need to spray and this and that. But the community is really stepping up to the plate, and, you know, believing in that kind of manual sort of treatment and ability to try and deal with these things. And they're putting money where the mouth is. We do a lot of work with very little amount of money. And uh, so we're 100% we're grant funded. Um, and we even we have, to have uh, probably a good 30% of our budget comes from private foundations, 20 to 30%. So we're somewhat diversified, so we're not completely reliant on your tax dollars. <laughs> Anything else? All right, thank you.